All right, so you want to get into some wild stuff happening in North Carolina politics. Let's do it. Okay, so we're diving into this whole thing with Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, you know, running for governor. And now there's this huge $50 million lawsuit against CNN, defamation, the whole nine yards. Yeah, it's wow. a big one. And it really gets into some interesting stuff, not just the political drama, but like yeah. what you do online, freedom of the press, how far someone will go to say, hey, that's not true. You're hurting me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So well, for people who might not be familiar, who is this guy, Mark Robinson? What's he all about and what got him into this mess? So Robinson, he's trying to be North Carolina's first black governor. He's got this really out there style, like really says what he thinks, which yeah. obviously some people love, some people not so much. He's running as a conservative, big on social issues. You know the deal. Right. But here's where it goes sideways. Just weeks before the election, CNN drops this article and it could totally tank his whole campaign. Oh, I bet. They link him, and I mean directly link him, to these old comments online on a website. I'm not even going to try to sugarcoat it. It's called Nude Africa. Okay, and what's on these comments? Like, what are we talking about? So we're not just talking about, like, bad jokes. These comments were really offensive, like really racially charged stuff, stuff that, honestly, even saying out loud is, ugh, I can't even repeat it. Wow. And CNN, they weren't messing around. They said they had proof it was him. We're talking matching usernames on different sites, the email addresses linked back. They even had people analyze uh, the way he writes online. Like, is it his style? And they're saying, yeah, it matches. They went full CSI on this. They went deep. And then it gets even wilder. They talked to this musician, local guy, Louis Money. Okay, and what's his connection to all of this? This is where it gets juicy. Yeah. So Money says back in the 90s, early 2000s, he knew Robinson, and they used to hang out together at, let's just say, places where you wouldn't expect a conservative politician to be caught dead. Oh, no. Adult bookstores, that kind of thing. Yeah. And remember, Robinson, his whole thing is being this, you know, family values guy. Yeah. So if this stuff gets out, it totally contradicts his image. Yeah, that's not a good look. Not at all. So Robinson, obviously, he's denying everything. Says those comments, not him. Maybe his accounts got hacked. Someone else did it. He's even going so far as to say CNN is trying to sabotage his campaign like they have a political axe to grind. Wow. So he's saying they're making it up entirely. Pretty much. And he didn't stop at just denying it. He hits them with this massive lawsuit, like I said, $50 million mm. for defamation. 50 mil. Dang. Yeah, he's not playing around. And it's not just CNN he's going after. He's saying this Louis Money guy is lying, straight up lying about knowing him and everything. Mm. He's even dragging in another news site, The Assembly, saying they're all in on it together. So it's a conspiracy now. That's what he's saying. Mm. But it makes you wonder, right, is he really trying to clear his name? Or is this just a way to shut everyone up and play the victim? And I bet this whole lawsuit thing, it's got to be scary for someone like Money, right? Oh, absolutely. You said it. Scary is a good word for it. Like, even if Robinson doesn't win, doesn't money still have to, like, lawyer up, fight this thing? That's got to cost a fortune. Oh, yeah. That's the thing about these defamation cases. They're expensive, win or lose. And CNN, they've got lawyers on staff, deep pockets, money. He's a musician. This is a whole other world for him. David and Goliath kind of thing. So, okay, let's <laughs> say they go to court. What does Robinson actually have to prove to win? Like, isn't it enough to just say, hey, that wasn't me. Those weren't my words. It would be nice if it were that easy. But when you're a public figure like Robinson, it's trickier. It's not just about whether the info was true or not. He's got to prove what they call actual malice. Actual malice. What's that mean in plain English? So basically, he has to show that CNN and money knew it was false, like they were deliberately lying uh. or that they were so reckless, so careless in their reporting, they didn't care if it was true or not. That's a high bar to clear. It is. Especially with CNN, they're not some fly-by-night operation. Mm -hmm. You've got fact-checkers, lawyers, the whole shebang. They don't just throw stuff out there. Yeah, that makes sense. And to be fair to CNN, they really did try to connect those comments to Robinson. It wasn't mm -hmm. just some random thing. They matched usernames, emails, everything. Right. But didn't you say earlier that Money had been talking about this stuff for years? That's the thing. He has been. And this is where it gets interesting. If Money was telling this story before Robinson was even in politics, Yeah. It kind of throws a wrench in the whole, this is all political argument. Mm. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like, what would money's motive be then? Exactly. And here's another layer to this. Robinson's lawsuit, it doesn't actually say he didn't know money. In fact, he admits to going to that bookstore, the one where money worked. Wait, really? I missed that part. Oh, yeah, it's in there. He's saying, sure, he knew him, maybe even chatted with him, brought him free pizza once, you know, just being friendly. Free pizza, just guys being dudes. 
That's his story. He's sticking to it. But it's up to the courts now to figure out who's telling the truth. And, you know, beyond just Robinson and money, this whole thing could have bigger implications. Like, what if Robinson wins this, gets his 50 million bucks? What does that say to other journalists out there? Yeah, that's got to be chilling, right? Like, don't report on anything controversial, even if it's true, because you might get sued into oblivion. Exactly. Especially those smaller outlets. They don't have the resources to fight a legal battle like that. Mm. It's a tough balance between protecting someone's reputation yeah. and making sure people are held accountable. No kidding. And, you know, with this whole thing, Robinson throwing in the assembly, mm. mentioning Soros, it almost feels like there's the strategy, you know? Yeah, for sure. This whole, they're out to get me, the media is the enemy thing mm -hmm. we see so much of these days. It's like he's playing to a certain audience, right? Totally. And it might work. He might fire up his base, get them even more on his side. But it could also backfire, make him look desperate, like he's just trying to distract from the accusations. It's risky. Very risky. But that's politics for you, Rob. Yeah. And it shows how messy it gets when you throw in the internet, social media, everyone's got an opinion. It's a minefield out there. Tell me about it. And it makes you think, right? Like, how much should we even care about stuff people say online, especially if it's, you know, anonymous or on those kind of websites? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's a tough one. Like, can we really judge someone on that? Should that be held against them forever, even if it was years ago? I mean, that's the thing about the Internet, right? It's kind of forever. Your digital footprint, they call it. Yeah, your digital footprint. And this case, with Robinson suing, it's almost like, what do they call those lawsuits? SLAPP suits? Yeah, as LAPP. It stands for Strategic Lawsuit Against Public Participation. Right, right. SLAPP. And those are different, right? It's not really about winning the case. It's about something else. It's about sending a message. Basically, you use the lawsuit itself to scare people into silence. Okay, so like, how would that even work? Say you've got a big corporation, right? And some little environmental group is criticizing them. Right. So instead of, I don't know, debating the issue, the company hits them with a lawsuit. Maybe it's a bogus lawsuit. Maybe it's not even about winning. But they know it'll cost that little group a ton of money to fight it. So they have to back down, even if they're right. Exactly. That's yeah. the whole point of us SLAPP. Yeah. And you could argue that Robinson's lawsuit, with the huge amount of money dragging in all these different people, it has that kind of feel to it. Yeah, especially with the election right around the corner. Timing is everything, right? And look, regardless of how this all shakes out in court, it's already had an impact on Robinson's campaign. People have quit. He's lost support. Even Trump, who was backing him before, seems to be keeping his distance now. Ouch. Yeah, that's going to hurt. No kidding. So it begs the question, is this just a last ditch effort to save his campaign? Or is something else going on here? You mean, like, is he using this whole thing to his advantage somehow? Maybe. Think about it. He's painting himself as the victim, the target of a witch hunt. The media is out to get him. It's a powerful narrative, right? Especially these days. <laughs> a lot of people distrust the media. They eat that stuff up. Yeah, I can see that. It's like he's turning the whole thing on its head. Exactly. But it's a gamble. It might work for some voters, but it might turn off others. It's a wild story, that's for sure. No doubt. And I think it really highlights this whole thing about... You know, the Internet never forgets what you do online. It has consequences. And it makes you wonder, where do we go from here? Like, how do we deal with this stuff moving forward? It's a big question. And honestly, I don't have all the answers. But it's something we all need to be thinking about. Our online lives, our real lives, they're blurring together more and more every day. No kidding. Well, on that note, I think we've done our best to unpack this whole thing, all the twists and turns. We dove deep, that's for sure. And hopefully our listeners have a better understanding of what's going on, the arguments on both sides, all of that. Exactly. It's yeah. not about picking sides. It's about giving people the information to make up their own minds. Absolutely. And who knows, maybe this whole thing will spark a bigger conversation about how we handle these kinds of situations in the future. I hope so, because it's not going away. Well said. Well, that's it for our deep dive today. As always, thanks for listening. Thanks for having me.